And that's a good point that you made because people ask me all the time, okay, so what should I have in an e-portfolio? And I think I wanted to use some time in this presentation to talk about the specific artifacts that people want to have. And I'm going to focus a little more on the instructional design one, obviously, because this is the, the topic here. But it applies across any discipline. So the first thing that I always say to people, they want to see the ability that you have to produce tangible stuff. The e-portfolio is not necessarily about just putting something to abstract and all of that. You have to have a deliverable. So things that they, they are looking for nowadays when they're trying to hire in our field especially, number one, your ability to solve instructional problems. People want to know that you are not only good putting together a training for the sake of putting one or creating an online tutorial just because you believed that that was going to be the solution. You have to spend some time looking for the problem and a good instructional designer should come up with a solution to that problem. So oh, a nice. good analysis document of that, it's a must. You need to have an analysis document. People hate uh, course design plans, but those are basically the backbone of good instructional design. And people want to see your ability to put together a plan that is very specific, measurable, but at the end, that uh, we want to see how it was implemented as well. You know, and that's really important because instructional designers are not loop. Anyway, I mean, as a group in the loop, um, it's kind of the sensei of baseball sometimes. And they look for certain things, things that aren't obvious to people that aren't in the field. Um, simple things like write an objective. <laughs> yeah. And you look at this, and I mean, it gets more complicated as you get farther into it. And as you document these things, it's just like in medicine or in any other field. You can tell when somebody knows what they're talking about by their language, by their vocabulary, by the things they present as important, and those pieces of documentation. So as you say, as if you had a design plan, and you go through it and you have real objectives in it and you have real evaluation tasks and you know how to write a rationale and you know how to write prerequisites for learners and facilitators. As another designer looks at that, the more experience they have, they instantly look at that. You know, this is an individual that really knows what they're doing. And in the absence of what you're talking about, Miko, there's no way that you're going to be able to just sit there and talk about it or Zoom and talk about it or whatever you do. And the other thing that we know, that when you get in the moment of an interview, you forget 99% of what you were going to say anyway. Yeah. So the more of this that you can document, and wow, I just love this stuff. 